Y'all, we got the five-speed manual, Fiat 500, that my dad rented through Turo for me. I would have rented it myself, but I only have $100 in my checking account. La, 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 la. Isn't that wonderful? I'm the most relatable YouTuber because I don't have any money. Anyways, um, we rented this because, one, if I'm making car views, I need to learn how to drive stick. And, two, I don't know anybody with a stick shift. And, three, um... I have a job interview on Friday for a porter and I'm like, I feel like if I learn to drive stick or at least like know it more than I would, maybe not an expert, that'll make me a better candidate. So let's get into this car. Now, the first thing I know everybody's thinking about is these wheels. These are aftermarket wheels. I think they look really good. They put the Abarth center cap. I don't know if I'm saying that right on there. And it looks like they upgraded the brakes too. Um, I really like these wheels, and I think the red accents really fit this car. I'm not usually a fan of red wheels, but I feel like on a Fiat, Loki, you could put like any colors on a Fiat and it looks good. That's what I really like about um, Fiat's is their customizability. They have a whole bunch of different trims. I don't even know what trim this is, um, but they have a whole bunch of different trims you could get with this. And there's a bunch of little different mods you could do. Like people be putting little cool paint jobs on this. And I think this is one of the coolest cars to put a paint job on. Like people be putting paint, custom paint jobs on like chargers and all that. And I feel like it doesn't look that good or like a wrap on a BMW. But I feel like on a car like this, it usually looks good. Cause I feel like this car is almost like a blank canvas. And now this came out around 2007. So it is been around the market for a long time. Although it's not on the market anymore. I don't even know what year this is, but it doesn't have a backup camera. So it's probably like a 2015. I could just check in the door but this came to the market from europe and it was it came around a little bit late to the trend you know with the classic styling around the time the pt cruiser came out the chevy hhr the ssr whatever that truck's called and all those other cars but of all those cars i feel like this one looks really good because it kind of just looks like the classic fiat 500 i think like a lot of those tried to do a retro styling on a car that didn't exist where i feel like if you just do like the modern version of a retro car it looks a lot better and that's what fiat did now let's look at the front you have this tiny little grill all down here it's not as small you could have got fog lights as an option but this one doesn't have it and then there's no leds that was an option i think on the european models for the later models the u.s models never got that you also get i think xenon headlights were an option i was trying to look online and i'm pretty sure they were obviously these are not xenon i do like the split level design with the daytime running lights right here and the turn signals right here and I kind of like this grill with the chrome right here. I'm usually not a fan of that much chrome on the car, but I feel like on a car like this, it looks good. Now, you also get these chrome mirror caps, which I think look really good. Oh, look, there's me in the camera. Y'all like my American Dad iPhone case? It's Ricky Spanish. Anyways, you could also get an option, I think, obviously for a black mirror, you could get like a red mirror. I wonder how this would have looked with the red mirrors. I kind of feel like that would have been a little bit too much red. I, I like the chrome get a little turn signal right here and then for the roof you could have either got a panoramic sunroof as an option or a convertible soft top but this doesn't have either the mode owner i think painted this they did a lot of little red accents on this car which i think looks really good i like this spoiler look what i put on the back of it because i don't want people to be getting mad at me because i'd be stalling in traffic sometimes uh you got this custom exhaust down here and of course we're going to do exhaust test but let's do exhaust test right before we leave because this car is pretty loud it has a cold air intake and an exhaust and if we're going to start revving it we're right in this church parking lot you know there's a bunch of karens in this neighborhood like you know damn well the cops are going to show up so we're going to do that right at the end before we drive away okay y'all we're about to do an exhaust test and i really hope my phone doesn't run out of storage because i do not want to do this <laughs> because this has a well i do want to do it but this car has a really loud exhaust and it's middle daylight there's a bunch of houses around us there's karen over there and somebody already got mad at me and my dad well they didn't get mad they had they're like why, why do you keep driving up and down the street and then we explained that this is a big hill and i'm learning to drive stick so i was getting going up hills you know what i mean and they're like oh no, no never mind you're good you're good she just thought i was racing up and down but it just has a loud exhaust but i really have a feeling that we're going to start the car and show the exhaust and i feel like somebody's going to say something but guess what i don't care
but this bar right here bar i don't know if it's called a bar usually is chrome i like how the owner spray painted this red i think it looks pretty good i think it would have looked good if this was a giant reflector these are the tail lights you could turn signals right here honestly i'm thinking i need to turn off the headlights before this battery dies i forgot to say let me know what you guys think of the audio i didn't put on my mic this time because i was doing it and i noticed the audio sounded worse than just not even having a mic can you believe that let's open the trunk though you get a little button under here and i like this big fat metal nose that sticks out no rear view camera obviously this but when it was federally mandated they came with a rear view camera and you know what i think is so funny is this tiny little removable parcel shelf this is literally so tiny here's how big the key is it's literally in the thinnest part it's like as wide as the fiat key this is so tiny the owner put a subwoofer in this so we don't get to do a sound system test because it's our aftermarket sound system it obviously sounds good i only like testing it if it's like the sound system that came on the car you know what i mean uh, but you could fold these seats down and i don't even you don't even really get that much storage i feel like everybody who folds these seats down you know they're probably just folding them down to get groceries <laughs> like you really can't carry that much in this car especially with the aftermarket subwoofer back here i'm like damn obviously this car isn't really a daily driver for this person you know what's something that's cool though is i'm not sure if this came on the car i'm pretty sure it did because it matches the car but this pull strap because you don't really have anywhere else to pull this pull strap that has the 500 logo and it's leather although it's coming apart it looks like somebody's dog got a hold of it it looks kind of like a dog leash, similar quality leather, and you get this nice stitching on it. On a Fiat 500, it's because it's that Italian craftsmanship. Oh, look, and you could just whip that tailgate down. I think it needs a power tailgate. I'm just kidding. Oh, you know what else was an option I forgot to talk about? Is you could have got parking sensors in the rear as an option, which I think that's really good. Low-key, some cars that are so small, it needs parking sensors in the rear because I feel like you just keep getting closer and closer because it's so small. Before we get in, you get a little blind spot mirror in the driver's side, which is really nice. You don't get it in the passenger side. No driver assistance available besides, like, you know, traction control and all that jazz. Um, this this is kind of like a weird size, and it's in this corner. Honestly, you almost barely notice it. it's there, and it doesn't function as well as the blind spot mirrors that are in, like, a, a Hyundai, a base model Hyundai, or a base model Ford. Getting in, no keyless entry. Obviously, you get, like, remote keyless entry tree but no like you know the touch the door handle and all that jazz but here's the fiat key i really like this key i like how you press the fiat logo and it flips out um lock unlock that's the sound it makes and i really like how this car doesn't have like a zesty horn like i feel like a lot of small cars be having that gee 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 or really zesty horn this doesn't people are like what does zesty mean i don't think i could say the g word on camera i don't even know why i think that's stupid that you can't say the g word on camera youtube will start getting mad or something or not showing my video i don't even know i'm not even going to risk it but let's talk about these seats you could have got leather as an option leather there's a whole bunch of different seat options a whole bunch of different seat colors like brown blue literally like almost anything that's what i really like what i mean about the customizability of these fiats is like there's so much interior customizations and i really like these seats actually you'll be surprised now this it's not the nicest material there's some burn holes in it and some stains right here um the cloth i mean it's just average cloth this is like some this literally feels like the material that would be on like a really cheap doctor's office chair. I'm not even kidding. Same with this. This is like some plastic. But you know, this is a really cheap car, so I ain't really mad at it. You do get height adjustment for the driver's seat. What? For a second, I thought it wasn't going down anymore. I was like, don't tell me I can only adjust it up and you can't go down. Um, no driver's lumbar. And honestly... These seats for a small car like this, you would think they would be really uncomfortable, but they're actually not. I actually think these seats are fine. I wouldn't say they're like, you know, like comfortable, but like for a compact car like this, I would say they're kind of comfortable. This is definitely better than like a Ford Focus. Not that this really competes with a Ford Focus, but I feel like a Ford Focus is a class above this and it has a way worse or way less comfortable interior. So I actually really like these seats. You also get red floor mats and I like how the hood release is red that's kind of funny oh this looks like this wouldn't be the hardest car to work on this has all these weird random things like what is this what is this i'm not going to press it because this isn't my car traction control off button right here i like how the dashboard is color matched to the exterior i think that's pretty cool 
that's like what um the Volkswagen Beetle did. Oh, I really I should review a Volkswagen Beetle. I forgot that car exists. I feel like that's probably my favorite car of all the retro cars. Anyways, this door panel. You know what? Let's get in the car. Stainless steel silk plates, whatever these are called, pulling this door panel. Now let's talk about this interior. First off, this is all scratchy plastic, but this is a lot cheaper car, so I'm not really tripping. This is, um, it's not really padded, but you at least get some like red cloth here, which is nice. It's actually really nice because it goes all the way over here. I feel like in a cheaper car, usually this is like some just scratchy material. This is the window control, or not the window controls, the mirror controls. It's funny that when me and my dad got in this car, we were like, how do you roll down the windows? The windows are right here. And what really annoys me is it's not auto down for the drivers. I mean, I guess it's a nitpick, but I feel like this is one of the first cars I've ever been in where it doesn't have auto down for the driver. I feel like literally every other car has at least auto down, unless you're getting a car from like the 80s or 70s with power windows. One other thing to talk about, this feels like I could like rip it off almost. Let's talk about this steering wheel though. This leather quality, I don't even know if this is leather. I think this is like some fake leather. This is like a really hard steering wheel. I feel like usually leather wrapped steering wheels are just a tiny bit soft, but this feels like really, really hard and it's not the nicest leather quality, but it's whatever. Here's something that's interesting about the car. Listen when you turn on the high beams. Oh wait, we gotta turn on the car first. All right, key to start, press the Fiat logo. What's interesting about this key to start is I feel like most key to starts, you insert it like this and twist it like that to turn on. This one, you insert it here and then you twist it like that to turn it on. And I really hate the sound it makes. This is what it sounds like when you have, you're driving without your seatbelt on. It makes that annoying beep. Like, what is this, the 80s car? I hate it. It's whatever, though, honestly. It's not that big of a deal. You get some buttons behind the steering wheel to change your audio, although this has an aftermarket radio and i was trying to change the audio controls and it wouldn't work so i feel like it's just because of the aftermarket radio it's not fiat's fault no auto headlights but that was an option and i don't really like how you only have on on or off as an option i know that's a nitpick but anybody else kind of get annoyed when cars don't have at least like a parking lights option now here's what's weird is when you um turn the high beam listen to the sound it makes oh wait that's not it what why isn't it turning on Why does it make that sound under the hood? Now, let's talk about the um, center screen right here. You really can't do anything. This is all it shows. You know what I don't like, though? This is a five-speed, and I'm learning to drive stick on this. I really would like there to be a gear indicator. I feel like if you have a manual transmission car, you need to put, like, a gear indicator in the screen. You do get cruise control. No driver assistance in this. And then no auto wipers, but I'm pretty sure that was an option. I know for the European markets it was. It was probably an option for the American markets too, so that's pretty nice. No auto climate control, that was an option. What's weird is this is the AC button. When I was driving this car, I was like, how do you turn off the AC? And then I realized it's this, this is actually a button also. None of the other ones are. Damn my video i think it did my phone run out of storage it stopped the video randomly but i'm able to take a video now so i don't even know where it left off but i was talking about the navigation the newer models i think move the air vents down here and then have like a tablet style right there i'll put it on the screen probably we'll see how it was lovely my phone did run out of storage every single time it either runs out of battery or runs out of storage or overheats anyways red leatherette owner's manual i think that's pretty cool let's let's show you some of the quirks and features of the owner's manual psych i'm not douglas demiro i'm not doing that but look what's really cool in here is you get a usb charger in the glove box all right y'all i'm 6'4 time to get in the back seat of the fiat 500 damn i really just sat in the back of this fiat 500 for literally like hella long deleting a bunch of stuff on my phone because i ran out of storage oh my god sitting back here yeah no six six four mm -mm -mm. this is you will please don't run out of storage sitting back here mm -mm -mm. any adults are not gonna be having a good time and the headliner stain, so I feel kind of gross putting my, I just washed my hair today, I feel kind of, or last, yeah, today, I feel kind of gross putting my hair on the headliner, but, yeah, no, I don't have any room back here, headroom, 
legroom, no. Although the if the front the driver is really small, they can move their seat up a little bit because the front seats are actually pretty spacious, believe it or not. For even for a big person, I'm not even kidding. You have enough width and you have enough knee room. But if you gotta if you got something in the back seat, you better move your seat up or you're gonna be this person's gonna be really cramped. Plus, we do have four cup holders, but look. My legs are gonna hit that. Okay, y'all, let's set off. Now, I literally just started learning to drive stick today. Although I actually drove once before and I've been playing on my Beam G racing wheel. So we're not gonna put on the seatbelt just yet because y'all get to hear how annoying the thing is. Driving stick makes me nervous because I'm so used to automatic. Okay. Now the isn't this annoying? Now, um, the first thing I noticed is I think this has a, a little bit of work done to the suspension, so I can't say anything about that. But the first thing I noticed is this has a pretty stiff suspension. Actually, really stiff. There's not much body roll at all, and it's really good around. Oh, I let off really good there. There's not much body roll. And um, the ride quality is terrible. But that's because this is a more sporty car. Honestly, I ain't even going to, I don't really mind the ride quality that much. It's not like it's the worst thing. I'm wondering why this has a check engine light. I don't think I remember that having a check engine light. This literally has a check engine light now. I don't know what that's about. Uh, what's it called? Now people, bro, people be saying all this stuff about Fiat. I was reading, a, I didn't even show y'all under the engine bay. Wow, I hella forgot to do that. I hella forgot to do, bro, and I forgot to take the thumbnail. Okay, we're gonna go park somewhere and do that. Oh, the ride quality? I mean, yeah, the ride quality is not good and you feel the bumps and stuff, but honestly, I rode in a Tesla Model 3 as a passenger. They were an Uber driver and it felt the same way. And I feel like that's unacceptable for a Tesla. Oh my god, I'm so, honestly, I cringed. I, that was bad what I just did. I'm not the, I'm learning to drive manual, okay? This is actually like the first car I have like real manual experience with. And what am I say about it? The clutch, honestly, the clutch is pretty light. I like the clutch. Um, it's kind of easy for me to learn manual on. What else do I like? Oh, this is, this is bumping a lot. The shifter. This is a five-speed manual. One thing I noticed is it like how it is. You have to go all the way over for reverse and then five is like in the middle of this random weird little spot. And me and my dad both got kind of annoyed at that. He got more annoyed at it than I did. I didn't mind it as much, but my dad seemed to mind it more than I did. What's it called, but letting off the clutch. My dad is talking about, oh, you need to feel it like bite or whatever, but I don't really, I don't really feel that in this car. Like, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't really feel it. It's almost, it's not, I don't want to say it's almost like a guessing game, letting off the clutch, but like, I feel like once you get used to it, you got to press it like a quarter of the way down. And then I guess that's where it's little bite mark is or whatever. But it, it seems like a guessing game to me. All right, let's, oh, I hear a cat meowing. Ooh. What is this? What's the M&M man? What is this? What are these M&M people doing here? Bro, why I kind of want them? That's trash though, I don't want that shit. There's a reason it's at the trash can. What are, those are kind of cool though. Look at me wanting that trash, right? Anyway, let's open up the hood and show you what's powering this beast of an engine. Where's the prop rod for this? Oh, it's right over there. Well, you know what? I'll just leave it open like this because I can. 20% uh, of battery remaining. But shut up. Obviously, this sway bar is aftermarket these stickers. No, Fiat came from the factory and put these stickers on from the factory. 
and you get an aftermarket intake. What engine is this? This is the 1.4 liter naturally aspirated engine. Produces 101 horsepower and 96 pound feet of torque. Bro, this doesn't even have 100 pound feet of torque. But honestly, it's actually really slow, but it's actually really fun to drive. This is like one of those slow car fast things, like a Miata. I haven't driven a Miata, but now I know what people be talking about. Brother, I know this would be so boring to drive with an automatic. Maybe not so boring, but anyways, with the intake and I feel like whatever, exhaust and intake Ricer Boy mod, what does this have like 105 horsepower? You get an extra four horsepower? I don't even know. You get a 1.4 turbo options that became standard in the later years. I had like 130 horsepower and I think like 160 pound foot of torque. And then the Adbarth model had like 160 horsepower also. MPG. This gets wait a second. I'm just realizing. Let me let me read my spec sheets for a second and have the hood open, bro. I don't want to like shut it all the way. What did my spec sheets say? 28 MPG in the city, 33 MPG on the highway. But that's terrible. That's terrible. For a car like this, come on. Needs a little bit better MPG. Anyone else think so? Like my Mazda 6 gets basically like 33 MPG on the highway. And that has literally like two times the horsepower of this and weighs way more. Anyway, what is, oh, this engine has a few problems. What are they? Let me pull up my spec sheet and show you guys. Look how tiny, tiny, tiny. Look how tiny this little hood strut is. Tiniest hood strut I've ever seen. Let's show you guys what the, the problems with this car is because you guys know Fiat, it's going to have some problems. There's some problems with the faulty, there's some faulty fuel injector seal. So if you smell some gasoline coming out your car, then it's not good. The other thing is there's like a shutter in reverse and that's usually a falter, a uh, fault, but God, I cannot even talk right now. That's usually a faulty lower engine mount, which honestly this car had, I noticed, but maybe I just don't, I'm learning to drive stick on it. So that could just be me doing terrible in reverse. <laughs> the door handles can break and that's really about it. That's all kind of most of the problems I could find online. There's a few little like interior, like the trim brakes and stuff inside, but like engine problems, this actually doesn't seem like it's really that much of an unreliable car. Not that I expected, I mean, I guess I kind of expected it to be a little bit more unreliable. No offense, Stellantis auto group, but like people always be talking about, oh, Fiat's fix it again, Tony. And I feel like this car, mm, it's not as unreliable as you would think. Although, you know what? I can't say that because it just threw a check engine light. Okay, now we were at where we can have a little bit of fun. I'm flooring it all the way. Granted, I'm not in like a lower gear. Now, I don't like I don't like cars with a really loud exhaust. I'm like an old person. You would think for how me being 24, you would think I want that, but no, I find this exhaust drone annoying. I feel like it's way too loud. Um the other thing this car rattles a lot like you hear every little there's a whole bunch of different rattles in the interior oh i just went over a bounce and this car bounced a lot you know that was actually really fun how this car bounced over the uh the whatever what's it called rattles in the interior though i know it's a lot of rattles in interior but honestly i feel like it's a fiat you kind of come to expect that so i'm not really that ba ba mad about it and like the way i'm describing it it's not that much rattle it's completely fine like it's not really annoying honestly like go on like a ford or a chevy or and you'll hear those same rattles I like an older one the newer ones you might you probably won't but one that's like a few years old you probably will now this is a slow car and i don't know if i shifted right there that was a bad down that might have been a bad downshift to me No, you know, I, I'm going to do a 0 to 60 because I always do. And there's a check engine light. But guess what? Don't be, that's not, it's not, I don't want to say it's not my car because it's wrong. But I mean, like, I rent this. I, my dad spent money on this. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't afford it. And I really wanted to learn because I'm like, this will make, it's for, it's mostly to learn because I have a porter job interview. And I feel like that'll make me a better candidate. Because I actually really want this job. It's at a Porsche dealership. But who wouldn't want to work at a Porsche dealership? But I really want this job and I need a job. So I'm like, please, can I just, can you rent me a manual car so I can learn? 
anyway but like the waste my money on this so you know damn well i'm gonna get my money's worth and i'm gonna or his money's worth and i'm gonna do a zero to 60. plus i know everybody wants to see a zero to 60. now i'm not gonna be as fast as other people and i'm not gonna be trying to shift it really aggressively and i'm not gonna be revving it all the way to the red line because it has a check engine light but you know we're, we're still gonna do a zero to 60 and show you guys oh i'm nervous for this zero to 60 and i'm learning to drive stick let's see how it goes for the weird angle I don't really have anywhere else to pull over but I stood the 0 to 60 and I was too nervous and I did bad shifting this stiff suspension this stiff, stiff suspension over a road like this this is really slow but it's really fun to drive now those shifts were bad and I know everybody's gonna be making fun of me for those shifts but guess what we all know I'm just learning to drive manual so now on, this is on the curvy road, I drive all, or not all, but I try to do every car review on. And, you know, this is really fun on a curvy road. I'm having a lot of fun. Too bad there's, I'm catching up to a car. And in sport mode, in a higher gear, and this has the throttle manager or whatever, those like, you know that mod that makes you have better throttle response? This is really responsive and it's fun. Like, this is definitely a slow car, but I'm not really minding it. I would say this is probably one of some, oh my god, 10% of battery remaining, shut up. This is probably some of the most fun I've had. I would say, no, it's not. The most fun I had in a car is actually my friend's 335i. But this is a lot of fun, too. I would be having a lot more fun in this if I wasn't stressed out because I don't want to, like, shift bad because I'm learning to drive manual. And I, I, bro, those shifts earlier literally made me cringe so hard. Like, I feel so bad shifting like that. Let's do a downshift, though. And take it around this curve. This thing just grips. Like, I'd be saying, I could go so much faster if this freaking Camry in front of me would, like, go somewhere else. Although they don't have anywhere else to go, so... Hopefully they don't turn where I turn, I'm be mad. And I, bro, this is a manual transmission, 100 horsepower, and I'm learning to drive, bro, I cannot pass them. There's no, I'm not gonna be able to pass them. <laughs> That's what you get when you drive a slow car. But honestly, I actually really like this. I actually really like this car. I'm having a lot of fun in this car. Would I recommend this to someone else? Honestly, yeah. You could get these for under $10,000, and with a few mods, this is fun. The only thing is I would be like, beware of whatever this threw a check engine light for. Like, that can't be good if I, this is the first time I've ever been, actually, no, I was reviewing, but twice, twice now I've been reviewing a car and it throws a check engine light. The other time was I was reviewing my mom's car, her Ford Escape. But you could get these for under $10,000. Honestly, I think this is a fun car for under $10,000 to get. You know, yeah, you know, and it's really just for the driving experience. It's really just the driving experience. This doesn't really have much features. I mean, I, I think it would be a decent daily driver because at least you got a tiny bit of space in here. Oh, of course they're going front. You know what, we're gonna go, we're gonna go on the really curvy road. Um, you get, you get a, for a person who's 6'4", I have enough knee, leg, and headroom in the front seats. So the front seats are completely fine. And I feel like I am skinny, but I feel like if you're a bigger person, it would probably it'd be maybe a little bit cramped. But you know, you could. I wouldn't say don't go test drive one because you might actually end up liking it. 
but the manual transmission the shifter honestly it feels i don't have really any manual transmission cars to compare it to but it, i don't feel like it has short throws that's something people be saying about manual transmissions they have short throws i don't think this has short throws not like they're really long but you, i feel like you can't really like roll through the gears like you could other cars maybe it's because i don't know how to drive stick very well but i feel like the this one you kind of it's kind of harder to and um maybe you can a little bit and i think it's not i don't know if all manual transmissions are most manual transmissions are like this but i feel like trying to get it into the right gear and you don't feel it as much as i would like i don't know like you know i was expecting it to feel a little bit more mechanical which this does feel mechanical but it doesn't feel like you it doesn't feel how do i explain it it feels a little bit mushy almost okay that was a really good setting off right there oh crap we're gonna be going on a hill crap. trying to get set off on a hill is hard Cars are coming. Have engine checked. Yeah, I feel like I I, kinda, I like this car. I'm having fun driving it. I'm gonna turn on the AC though because I'm cold or I'm hot. But honestly. If it were me, as I kind of want to, I want to drive a, a Honda manual transmission. That's what I really want to drive. This car review may seem, I might not seem as good at this car review right now, like talk about the driving experience, but it's because I'm trying to concentrate on driving manual transmission while talking about the driving experience. So it's not as easy for me. All I can say is I'm having fun in this car. There's a reason somebody rented this on Turtle. You know, you don't need a fast car to have fun. Granted, I, I think it should, I would like a faster car. Like, yeah, you know, it's slow. It's actually really slow. Like you're constantly basically having to floor it just to keep up with traffic. So, but, um, or maybe not floor it. But you kind of, oh. See, it took that turn really well. I forgot that's our cliche corner. The traction control kicked in for a second, but I should have had the traction control off because I feel like if I had the traction control off, it would have, it wouldn't have kind of like kicked in and made it go a little slower. But you can take turns fast in this car. You can whip this car. This car on a back road, you know, I feel like this with the turbo, it just has a little bit more power. I feel like that would that would almost be the perfect amount of power for this car. I mean, yeah, sure, but a lot more power is good. This answers the question or not answer the question but proves that you can have fun in a slow car 100 horsepower i've never had this much fun in a car with 100 horsepower it honestly i would say this is one of the slowest cars i feel like i've reviewed this is like as slow as my jetta that i used to have with the two point slow engine the four speed automatic but this is way more fun this is one of the, this is probably one of the slowest cars i reviewed Get in your lane, stupid Tesla. This is one of the slowest cars I review, but it's also the, one of the most fun. Straight away here. I'm getting the hang of it. I'm getting the hang of driving manual transmission. I feel like I actually know how now. But I'm kind of excited to be done driving it and to just get back in my automatic car with a lot more creature comfort. It, honestly, oh, another thing. I feel like this is a little bit, I don't want to say it's scary to drive, but I feel like manual transmissions, cars are just scary to drive in general because it's one more thing to be distracted by. You have, it's not as easy to control the vehicle because you got to be shifting gears. And um, this is a really small car. 
I would hate to be in an accident in there. That's one thing that would deter me from this car. Is crash test. I don't know how I, I'll check on the screen how about this, the good safe rating. Safe, the safety ratings are. Speed limit extended. Bro, I do not care. I do not care about exceeding, exceeding the speed limit. I, I do not care. I hate when cars remind me that. Oh, you exceeded the speed limit. Who cares? Not me. Yeah. This suspension. You do feel the bumps, but it's not. It's, it's not the. It's not a good riding suspension. Like I said, but it's not that bad. I'm fine. Like it's not beating me up at all. Honestly, I reviewed that C63S. That felt like it had a harsher suspension. I'm be, I feel like I'm getting pretty good at shifting. Spoke too soon. Spoke way too soon. That speed limit keeps beeping. It's not the checking. But honestly, what are my overall thoughts on the car? It's just a fun car to drive. It's really just a fun car to drive. And it's not as it's not as small in here as you would think. Check engine light. I don't know what I gotta say about that. That would deter me. But if you're somebody, I feel like honestly a Fiat. I feel like it wouldn't be the hardest car to work on. But if you're somebody who likes working on cars, you don't care about that. You could work on it yourself. You know. I think we could get over the stigma of this being like a chick car, a gay boy car, or whatever. This is a fun car to drive. And I feel like it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about a car seeming a little bit uh, fruity. But yeah, I, I, I really like this car. This is a lot more fun than I expected. And I hope everybody enjoyed. The video.